Yep. It's dead. Yo, what's up, Luke Beacons here, and today we are doing something just a tad bit different. As you can see, we are not in our normal Windows operating system. Instead, we are in Ubuntu. It is a 64-bit distribution of Linux. Uh, I don't know what version it is, but that's okay, because it doesn't matter, because, as I'm sure you can tell from the title, in just a few minutes, we are about to destroy it. I'm sure many of you have heard the meme regarding Windows deleting System32, but what we're about to do is something quite a bit worse, because at least with that, maybe you could recover something afterwards, but with this, have fun, because, oh, we're about to, and anyone who wants to restore some files after we're done with this probably won't, so, um, as a, you know, continuing the spooktober tradition, we're going to do something a little bit spooky for the computer, but not for us, just a quick warning. Do not do this on your computer. Do not do this on your friend's computer. Do not do this on your Mac. If you have a PC, go ahead and do this because it's totally fine because it won't do anything. Unless you have a Bash client installed, in which case, do not. So, what we're essentially going to be doing here is telling the computer, Hey, um, I don't like having an operating system. I don't like having files. Uh, I'm going to go into a world without technology. So, uh, do that for me. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you. This is a... Uh, kind of a regular Ubuntu computer. Uh, I'm sure that some of you might be yelling at me for calling it Ubuntu instead of Ubuntu, but whatever. Uh, I don't really care. <laughs> so <laughs> I've looked it up, you can call it whatever you want. So anyway, I've had I have some files, just like, you know, let's just say some, some random person is, you know, using this computer. They have files all around. They're not exactly organized, but you know, whatever. They, they have a computer and they use it, so that's good. But uh, what happens if they, you know, stumble across this command on the internet and they're, go away, I don't want and they're just like, uh, let's see what it does. And um, they want to be like, well, I don't like having a PC anymore, so let's go ahead and, you know, sudo, I, I found this command called rmrf slash, what happens? Well, I gotta put in my password, it's osboxes.org, if you're wondering. And uh, that's actually not my YouTube password, don't try it, it's just for this computer. So it says, oh, it's dangerous to use this recursively on slash, which is just the root directory. And so some people, hopefully, the idea is that they'll see that and go, oh, this is a really, really, really bad idea. I'm going to not do this. But unfortunately, for most people, they put the bypass right underneath it. So we're going to do that. And it's going to be fun. So I'm sure that you're going to get a lot of people who just kind of see this and they're like, oh, uh, just gotta override with no preserve root, no big deal. And they don't actually bother reading the error, which is a huge problem because you always want to read the error because if you bypass the protections they have in place, well, you're gonna have um, a less than grand old time. But you know what? We are fun. We hate computers. We hate technology now. So we're gonna go ahead and no preserve root. So sudo, which is, just means in bash, which is kind of like a little operating system inside of... Linux or Unix systems, um, what it's doing is it just has effectively a list of commands. It's kind of like a little programming language that you get to work with and run different sort of commands to interact with your systems. And uh, back in the day, before this whole GUI thing, graphical user interface came about, that's all you had. You just had Bash to interact with your system. And yeah, there are some different versions other than Bash, which I believe stands for Born Again Shell. And um, but yeah, there, it's just a way for you to inter interact with your files, uh, operate with different commands, things like that. Uh, Windows, back in the old days, had something similar called DOS, and that was kind of converted into command prompt as time went on. Um, this is, you know, a shell. A shell is like the command prompt of Linux. So we're going to go ahead and use sudo, which just means super user do. Uh, so what sudo effectively tells the operating system is, I don't care what you have to say, what you have to think, or what you have to do. I am the super user and you will do what I say. So we're going to go ahead and tell it to destroy itself. Um, sudo, effectively sudo commit, uh, commit sudoku, that, that's a meme for those of you youngsters out there. Anyway, sudo rm or oldsters, I guess. Uh, sudo rmrf slash, and I need to put that, hold up, hold up, time out, time out. Sudo rmrf, no preserve 
Yes, I know I could just hit tab and it would go ahead and fill it in for me, but I want to type it out and then forward slash root directory. So what do you think is going to happen? Well, we're going to get a bunch of these little things that says operation not permitted. It doesn't really matter. We're about to see stuff start to go kablooey. Oh, there goes our entire desktop. Let's try to open up something before things get really worse. Uh, they're just going to leave that running for a little while. And uh, it's trying to open up our files. What's going to happen? We can still drag this around. Oh, looks like this... Uh, this isn't exactly going very, oh no, there goes our desktop, and it looks like we can't actually um, open another terminal. Oh no, there goes everything. I was, I was gonna say, um, I was gonna try to open up another terminal and be like sudo ls or something, and it would say something along the lines of, oh, we can't find ls, which just means list files, effectively. Um, or it, we don't know what ls means, because what we're doing is deleting all of the files that contain the instructions on how to actually execute these commands. So we have totally wiped out this operating system as long as as well as all of our files. So you're a normal user. Um, if you want to do this on your computer, just know the repercussions of your actions. I mean, I'm not here to stop you. I'm not here to tell you how to how to or how not to use your computer. I'm just here to tell you what it's going to do. So if you're at your friend's computer, again, I can't exactly stop you, but I highly recommend not doing this to somebody you care about or an enemy because it's kind of a jerk move, especially if they have important stuff on their computer. So, if you do this on Mac, actually, um, with the most modern versions from... What was the one before Sierra? Um, from... I'll look that up in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this machine. Uh, yeah, I'm running this in a virtual machine, of course. I'm not going to run this on actual hardware. Okay, so it enters file saving mode. And so, I'm going to go ahead and look that up. And uh, this is Grub Rescue. So Grub Rescue doesn't have all that many commands. It has ls. Oh, well, that's not much information. Also, it looks like right before Sierra was El Capitan. And so uh, I felt like there was one that started with a T, but that's kind of irrelevant to us. So what I was trying to say was that on Mac, if you run this command, it'll just end up deleting all of your files, but won't actually destroy the operating system itself like we just did. And that is because on Mac, it has some operating system protection. You're never actually running as root. Um, it shuts down, you know, actual use of the root user, yada, yada, yada. And um, it's just adds some extra protections. It's boring and we don't want it because we really like to destroy our own stuff. Or the stuff of others if you want to, you know, do questionably legal or illegal activities so uh, the, yeah that's all about that happens on Mac unfortunately it's not quite as exciting but it does do something quite negative to your computer so anyway we have this grub menu and what that is effectively letting us doing is some very 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 low level commands on this operating system and it doesn't even have much like one of the most basic commands in Linux is CD or it's actually Unix as well, called change directory, well, CD, which stands for change directory. But it, as you can see, if we do that in Grub, it doesn't know what CD means. So we're, we're kind of running on the bare bones right now. So um, we're going to go ahead and run some commands on this. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering, uh, Grub stands for Grand Unified Bootloader. And a bootloader is just kind of a way to tell the operating system how to start up. But unfortunately, we don't have an operating system to start up in the first place. So we're going to go ahead, and uh, we see these two little uh, little things there. So we're going to go ahead and um, ls hd 0 ms dos one and which is interesting because that's it, Microsoft DOS, Microsoft Direct, Direct Operating System, I think? Correct me if I'm wrong. So this is telling me the file system is ext2. Well, let's go ahead and ls hd 0 by itself. Uh, it doesn't know the file system, which it's kind of trashed, so that's fine. But what we can do instead is we can try doing a set root equals hd0 ms dos1. And that worked, but uh, it's not really going to help us. We could do also set prefix equals hd0 ms dos1. And then we can do that too, but um. Unfortunately, when we check to see if it's actually working properly, it in s mod normal, and this will tell us if it's working. Uh, no, it's not. So we are uh, we are in a bit of a predicament. So if we want to like try to mess with the prefix again, we actually there actually might be a way to fix it, but I'm not 
totally certain. I know, like, I know you can't get your files back unless you go into like some file recovery tool, which is actually looking into the hardware of the um, HDD itself, the hard disk drive, your hard drive, whatever you want to call it, and then you could like pull out little bits of binary information. But it, that's not the point right now. This just destroys everything. So yeah, so we're just gonna go ahead and leave that. That's a grub menu, but for all intents and purposes, our machine is dead. So that, if you guys ever wanna ruin your computer, go ahead and give this a shot and uh, let me know how it goes for you because we are out of options. So uh, thanks for watching guys. Uh, sorry for the kind of a clickbaity title just a little bit, but it is true. So uh, I'm, no, I'm not gonna call it a sensationalist title. It's it's not clickbait because I do exactly what you know what the title says I mean unless you want to get me on the whole instantly thing but who cares it's relative anyway so we have completed this we have destroyed this operating system now computers can fear us for uh, spooktober and Halloween and uh, next time you go out there set up your virtual machine and crush it just to show your superiority over it so thanks for watching guys and uh, make sure you drop this video a like if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. I respond to every single comment. Uh, leave a subscription. Hit that little bell icon. And uh, just let me know how things are going for you. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.